Hey everybody, I'm TJ Schwartz. I have a one car garage right here and I manufacture knives in it. Let's go check it out. As you can see, it used to be a garage door. I framed it in, insulated it, threw a window AC unit in it and a 36 inch door. And this is where I spend most of my time. So we're inside the shop now, looking at what was the garage door. I've got a bandsaw right here that doesn't get used very much because I now machine Kydex on the CNC mill as opposed to using that. I have a sandblasting cabinet. I have air run to it as well as a vacuum dust collection system. Got to keep the dust down. A air compressor. Uh, it's a relatively inexpensive Harbor Freight that actually keeps up very well, albeit in a loud fashion. I have a drill press. I have a TW90 Wurtz Machine Works grinder right here, tilts 90 degrees, and so I can sharpen or do edge finishing in various orientations, along with the various belt grits. I have a stone wash tumbling system. So it is full of ceramic stones. I have ceramic and porcelain. This thing vibrates and is also quite loud, and it does a stone wash finish on the knives that I make. So that is sort of the dirty corner of the shop. I have a sub wall to prevent some of the dust and debris. I also do some of the dirtier sanding work here. I would like to eventually have a taller wall that improves the uh, dust entrapment on this side of the shop. But that is my setup for the downstream processes on these knives. Now upstream, I do a ton of machining. So I have two CNC vertical mills. I have a Tor Tormach 1100 MX and a Sile X7. They are similar in that they do all the same things and have almost all the same features, but they are very different in other ways in that the Sile is a three phase, heavy duty, more industrial style machine. The Tormach is a lighter weight, but actually larger work envelope, single phase, just kind of generally lighter duty machine. They both do great work in, uh, in the tasks that I have them set to do. So the Sile is the wet process machine. It machines steel and so it uses coolant. It has this large enclosure so that when the coolant is spraying on the tool and keeping it cool, it all filters down, drops through the bottom and is recycled. And the Tormach currently runs a dry process. It is set up for coolant and I do run coolant occasionally, but with the handle material that I machine, I prefer to use a vacuum system. So this is a 3D printed custom vacuum mount and so the hose routes up over the machine and it draws up all the debris that is being machined away and it is a great machine i've had it for probably 18 months now and it's made most of my knives so far in totality this machine being a new machine is now starting to do the steel uh, wet side of the process and has been working really really well i'm very happy with the new purchase there so behind the machines, I have a kind of rough disorganized storage area that I need to improve a little bit. I've got a three phase uh, converter. So this machine runs on three phase. Like I said, I don't have three phase power. So it's currently powered with a converter. Uh, to support the power usage of the shop, I put in a sub panel or I had an electrician help me do it. I've got a plywood wall for a nice finish back here. The reason I did plywood is I can pull the plywood off and reroute wiring and then put the plywood back up. I installed a 7500 BTU heating unit. I do live in Idaho, so it does cool down in the winter. That keeps up really nicely with the insulated shop. I have the back of the Tormach here and the hose is just hanging for the vacuum. When I pull the vacuum over, I hook it up and I have a remote plug to essentially turn the vacuum on and off remotely when I'm running the vacuum system to make handles. As you can see, I have the handle fixture in here, um, various operations for making the handles of the actual knives. So this also is the machine that I make the Kydex sheaths on. So I thermoform the Kydex. I have the hot plate right here for warming up the Kydex and the press for pressing it over a mold. These are the various molds for the different styles of sheath. The Kydex then goes on and gets machined. I have another video about that, as well as many videos about the processes that go on in this shop. I have a laser engraver over here. This laser engraver uh, engraves steel. I can engrave deeply, I can engrave in a shallow way, like just an imprint. 
I do logos and different patterns for retailers and such. Really handy device. I have my design station for changing programming and different things on the machines. It's uh, really handy to have it in here and up out of the way where it's clean. Because this shop is attached to my house, I have storage. So I put shelves all the way around as far as I could go. That's for, you know, Christmas ornaments, Halloween decorations, all the stuff that we don't want in a storage unit, ideally. Uh, we do have a storage unit for totally seasonal stuff and that's pretty cool too. But yeah, I make the best I can out of a 300 square foot shop, actually under 300 square feet. And I'm trying to build basically the most effective quote unquote knife manufacturing uh, shop that I can build in a small space. I'm actually enjoying the practice of trying to be efficient and make the best out of the space. And I think it's going pretty well. I'm, I'm happy with the results. Uh, I'm gonna be posting tons more videos on all these processes. You can check out the videos that I've already made. And I gotta show you before I let you go what one of these finished knives look like. Couldn't leave you without seeing that. So this is my own personal carry, so it has a few scuffs and dings, but this model is called the Overland. It can be custom configured on my website. I have all different handle colors. I have uh, blade finishes. It could be coated and whatnot. And it's Magna Cut Steel, which is a stainless steel that I've had really great experience with, and it's a really high performer. Um, as far as the design of the knife goes, uh, general outdoor camping and utility style knife. It can cut on a flat surface, so lots of fixed blades can't actually reach uh, a cutting board because of the guard and the way the handle is shaped. So with that offset shape that you see there, it is excellent for food prep, which is part of the concept of the design. Again, I make my own sheaths. Again, sort of a beat up, uh, well-loved sheath here. I have kind of a unique approach to putting the clips on. As you can see, the clip sits on the very center of the sheath as opposed to off to the sides or being something bulky. So it makes for very easy use on your belt. And also the scalpel knives that I am currently machining on the style. These are incomplete. Um, I still have to put the bevel on them, but they're a utility sized, easy to carry, even like a desk knife. A letter opener if you will or um, any kind of backup could be in your back pocket or whatever and I'm making a batch of those currently so as you can see they are going onto the sile here and running like a top so I'm really happy with this machine I'm making those knives and yeah guys definitely check out my website schwartzknives.com stay on this channel for more content there's gonna be a lot coming how I make the knives I want to get out in the field and show you some of that process of you know using the knife what effective uh, design features I put into it all kinds of stuff so once again I'm TJ Schwartz this is Schwartz Knives thanks for stopping by